Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have punished sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, receive us, renew us, and lead us. mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to you to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
in peace, let us pray to the Lord. from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord, Lord For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Set us free from the hands of our enemies. 
beginning of Advent. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle in our Advent wreath, the candle of hope. <coughs> we light it today, today again to remind us that Christ will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us. The second candle in our Advent wreath is the candle of peace. It is sometimes called the Bethlehem candle because it reminds us of the place where preparations were made to receive the Christ child. Peace is a gift that we must be prepared for. God gives us this gift of peace when we turn to him in faith. The prophet Isaiah calls Christ the Prince of Peace. And through uh, John the Baptist and all the other prophets, God asks us to prepare our hearts so that he may come in. Our hope is in God and in his Son, Jesus Christ. Our peace is found in him. We lit this candle today to remind us that he brings peace to all who trust in him. Well, last week's gospel took us nearly to the end of Luke's story. And today we're introduced to the preaching of John the Baptist. We're told the names of the emperor, the, the governor, and other political leaders of the day. Politically, Luke indicates circumstances have changed. Judea is now ruled by a Roman governor, and the Jewish leaders operate under the Roman emperor, Tiberius. Luke's mention of them presents an orderly and thorough account to set the time and the place in history. At the end of this list of rulers, John, the son of Ze uh, Zechariah, and by this point in, the, in Luke's account, We've already been introduced to John. We know that he had, came from an unlikely con uh, conception that, of Ze uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth because they're old and Elizabeth is barren. And we know that he's related to Jesus. John the baptizer is great before the Lord, but he's clearly inferior to, him, to Jesus. And John gave his message while he's in the wilderness. And John was not satisfied with the way things were. And his words helped prepare us for the coming of the one who will turn the world upside down. John's words tell us to examine our own lives and the world <coughs> around us. We should not be complacent in the face of injustice but instead seek forgiveness and strive for lives that bear fruit according to God's vision for this world. We all have the potential during this season especially to over-spiritualize the Bible and our faith and in a, some way to become disconnected from the real needs of the world, or world around us. And this could be even greater in the days of Christmas, as we sometimes overemphasize gifts. We do some excessive eating. I know that I've been guilty of that, and drinking, or simply desire to escape from the difficulties of ordinary life. John provides us a warning about ignoring the truth about our sinfulness and brokenness in this world. But John also repeats the promise that God ultimately will not settle for the way things are in this world and that God's salvation will be known in the one who is to come, Jesus. The angel Gabriel had told Zechariah and he will go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children, and to the disobedient, to the wisdom of the just, to make ready for the Lord a people prepared for him. Zechariah then spoke, and he had been mute during this period of time. He had been made mute. And you, 
child will be called a prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give his people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Luke reinforces divine fulfillment further by citing the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Our scripture today situates John the Baptist as a prophet standing in the gap between the Hebrew prophets of old, like Isaiah, and the promised prophet to come, Jesus. And given this connection to the Hebrew prophets' tradition, it's not surprising that the word of God comes to John in the wilderness. The significance of the wilderness was established in Jewish tradition long before John the Baptist showed up there. The Hebrew Bible portrays the wilderness as a place of desolation and scarcity, but it is also a place of safety and divine providence. Think of God's intervention as Moses leads the people of Israel through their 40-year journey in the wilderness. And remember that the young David runs to the desert to escape Saul's wrath. The prophet Elijah flees from perse persecution into the wilderness as well. Wilderness is everywhere in prophetic texts and also includes the promise of abundance and joy, like in Isaiah 35. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall re rejoice and blossom. Luke makes use of these in his description of John. And notice, too, the often overlooked detail in Luke, the chapter 1, verse 80. The child, John, grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. John the Baptist does not simply appear one day in the desert. Luke suggests that his growth and spiritual strength actually developed there. And this is a hopeful and necessary message for us this day. It doesn't take much effort to imagine our world as a desert. Scarcity, isolation, hunger, and violence seem to be the rule of the day. The pain and injustice of this world around us can make us wonder whether God is at work in this wilderness. Luke suggests that the wilderness is precisely where God provides what we need so that we may, can now be the ones crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Luke carries these things through the gospel. Led by the Spirit into the wilderness, Jesus withstands the devil's temptation and returns filled with the power of the Spirit to enter into public ministry. Again and again, when people's needs and demands increase, Jesus withdraws to des deserted places to commune with God. The word about Jesus spread around, and many crowds would gather to hear him and be cured of their diseases. And afterwards, he would repeatedly withdraw to deserted places to pray. Jesus taught his disciples to do the same thing. After their return from missionary activities, he took him with them and withdrew privately to a city called Bethesda. He did this in order to be able to carry on ministry. And Jesus and his followers, then and now, leave the space and solitude and divided provision found.
I invite all of you to find your own wilderness. Just like Jesus and, and John did, to become strong in spirit and find peace in our God. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the peace you give us through Jesus. Help us to prepare our hearts to receive him. Bless our worship. Guide us in all that we say and do. We ask this in the name of the one born in Bethlehem. We proclaim our faith in the words. In the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in the promised child, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to death to the living man. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the memory of the Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Prepare your church to share the good news. Life-giving God, put the word within us and dwell among us. Send us out to proclaim the mercy and salvation that abides in you. Hear us, O God. Now hear the Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Protect the creation, life-giving God. Sustain the mountains and the hills. Restore the rivers. Give us wisdom and compassion to share for, for wilderness areas and urban ecosystems. Move us to care for your creation so that its forms in all its forms and riches. Hear our, uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Purify the hearts of all people, life-giving God. Remove the hate that lives within us and among us. Mold us into peacemakers. Raise up leaders rooted in your love and fed by your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all who hurt, life-giving God. Wrap them in your tender care. Remember the forgotten and send us out to share your love with them. Be with the wandering, the worried, and the woeful. Those we name aloud or in our hearts. Let's pray for Ryan Brown, Joyce Winborn, Dan Phillips, Pastor Peterson, Mike Spots, Desiree Cummings, Sam Lahanus, Tim McConaughey, Joe Ralph, Gwen Sharp, Roger Dunlap and family, Sue Anderson, Tyler Failinger and Baby Emmett, the family of Pastor Gwen Horn, Sherry Brown, Judy Jones, Mary Cowper, Ruth Mills, Betsy Flam, Sandy Ralph, Canyon Rice, Bob Teeman, Pastor Cribs, Robert Sharp, Janie, Ed Anderson, Helen Talby, our members who do not attend, and all those serving the country in the military. Do we have other petitions? Debbie Nelson. Jane? Debbie Nelson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless this congregation, life giving God. Give strength and joy to worship leaders, musicians, our altar guild as they prepare the way for the celebration of Christ Jesus coming among us. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the generations who have shown us your faithfulness. Shine your light on those who mourn and prepare us for the day when we will see you face to face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Confident that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we bring you to these prayers and those unspoken. In the name of Christ, our Savior and Lord, and into our hands we commend those who, for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. We share that.
together the words that, that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we do not want to take any temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.